As a Christian, an herbalist, and a homeschool mom, nature is a constant source of inspiration and wonder to me. While living in the Appalachian Mountains of Upper East Tennessee does afford me and my family plenty of time in nature throughout each of the four seasons, being intentional and mindful of nature takes effort. One way we spend time in nature almost every day is through an after-lunch nature walk as a family. Each day is different. Sometimes we explore our own property. Other times we venture down the road to a neighbor's land with their permission, of course. And then there are times when we head up the mountain or down to the creek. No matter, we have cameras available to capture memories as they're made, pruning shears and foraging bags to collect the bounty nature offers us, and every now and then a journal and pencils of some sort to do our best to capture on paper a fleeting moment of the beauty we see. One of the ways I like to appreciate nature and the gifts it provides is by bringing some of it home with us. Sometimes it's a new seed, a feather, or a leaf to identify. Other times it's little items for our nature table, which paints a picture of each season as well as the temperate area in which we live. And then there are those times when I'm looking for something specific to use as a part of my home's decor. Not only do our daily nature walks provide us with items for learning, beauty, and wellness, but they also teach us about God's goodness and greatness too. Many days, particularly warm autumn ones, the boys and I will gather outside on a blanket to wrap up our homeschool group work. This involves laying a large blanket out in our yard in half shade and half sun to suit everyone, gathering all of the books we'll be reading together, as well as having journals, drawing utensils, and even Legos available to keep little hands busy as they listen. studies vary from term to term and year to year, but they almost always consist of science, history, or geography lesson, foreign language study and practice, Bible devotions, biography read-alouds of great people throughout history, listening to composers, hymns, or folk songs, reciting poetry, and reading interesting and exciting books together as a family. The arrival of autumn naturally brings an end to things. One is our homeschool year, or at least it's the time we start to wrap things up. Next is that nature begins to prepare for its winter rest, and so does our garden. This year's garden was a last minute decision. The soil was quickly plowed, hills were tilled, and our favorite and most used seeds were planted. Beans, peas, tomatoes, okra, hot and sweet peppers, squash and zucchini, and of course, Ezra's famous watermelon. As the days grow cooler and we harvest the last of our garden's bounty, it's time to put the garden to rest. This means that spent plants will be uprooted and composted, the soil will be covered in manure and plowed once more, and lastly, a thick layer of mulch will be placed on top like a warm and cozy blanket. The garden will then be left alone to sleep until early spring.
comes to a close, the lessons are finished, outdoor work is done, the house is cleared, and supper dishes are washed. I sometimes find myself with a little spare time to attend to the aesthetics of my home. This is a peaceful and meditative process for me. It's where I can pull from the inspiration and beauty that I gathered from the day's nature walk and bring those elements into my home. Six people live in this house, and my goal with our home is to make it a cozy, happy, and restful place that allows for room for creativity, exploration, and learning. Autumn makes space of more of these things as the days shorten and the nights lengthen. We begin to find ourselves spending more time indoors than out, and we take time to notice the things that we value in our lives. Mm -hmm.